a privilege and a very humbling experience to be afforded an opportunity to be here in the first place and to be able to speak to you. I want to first thank all of you for the remarkable show of support that you have given to us in Guyana in so many respects. Many people do not understand and really do not appreciate what that support means to us in Guyana. During the difficult five months period and during that elections, you stood with us very firmly. Whenever we wavered a little, whenever we were losing hope, you were here in New York on your Facebook page, in the newspapers, even on the streets, giving us inspiration, giving us knowledge, giving us energy. And we in Guyana are eternally grateful for that support and for that emotional strength that you delivered so admirably. I also want to thank you for all the charitable work that you have been doing. Dr. Tara Singh spoke about an initiative at Wales and you are planning another one to assist our people in Blackwish Boulder and I want to take this opportunity to thank you deeply for those charitable efforts. We feel good in Guyana. We feel strong in Guyana when we know that we have you in the diaspora that is so connected to what happens in Guyana and you care so much about what transpires in Guyana and we know that we have a partner in the diaspora who is prepared to stand with us in every respect to hold our hands and to help us when necessary. And Panditji, I want to thank you in particular for the type of leadership that you are obviously offering to this great Guyanese community in Queens, New York, to keep you so rooted to our religion, to our culture, Hinduism, as you know, is the oldest religion. Whether we are Dharmic, whether we are Aryan, it matters not. Mahatma Gandhi said, religion is simply a set of roads leading to the same destination. All the great religions of the world, they preach essentially the same thing. And politics is no different. Politics is the harm. Jerry Jagan was not a religious man. But no one can dispute that his life, his deeds, his accomplishments were all dharmic, were all Islamic. We're all Christian. Why? Because religion is about service to humanity. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that the greatest deed that one can do is to serve his fellow human beings. And you are doing that here commendably and admirably. And that is what 
true politician is about service to his fellow man. And if you are nobly committed to that cause, then you are doing what your religion mandates. And we believe in satsang. We believe in this type of worship. When you worship as a community, when you worship as a Tao, when you worship together, you clean and cleanse the entire community, even those who are not with you here. And that is why Hinduism preaches and mandates this type of communal worship. Bilas at the Sangha Vivek and Amor Hirama Prepa, Bilasura Panasuri. Tulsida Sadira Mind says, worship in Satsang and it's recognized as one of the eight forms of devotion by our great religion. Kirtan, another form of devotion. So we have a great religion and culture and tradition that we are a part of. And you here in the United States of America, you are subjected to so much influence, so much distraction, maya, but the fact that so many of you so beautifully attired in your cultural apparel are here this morning gathered to worship in the way that we were brought up, in the way of our culture and our tradition is a great accomplishment. And I want to congratulate all of you. I must bring you greetings also from our president, Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali and the government of Guyana and our general secretary, Bharat Jadil. They are all here in spirit. And we will continue to do the best that we can do for our country. And let me report briefly on what we are doing in our country. Your country, Guyana, is at its best place ever in its history. We are now, we are now officially an oil producing country. And that has brought tremendous, immeasurable opportunities and progress. In my budget speech in the parliament, I quoted from a Brazilian magazine that identified Guyana as the next Dubai. Although we have a COVID pandemic, which has devastated the world economy. Still yet, there are so many investors who are knocking at our doors. Just take the hotel industry, for example. We have another Marriott coming, we have a Hilton coming, we have a Holiday Inn, we have a Sheraton, and I don't know how many other more branded hotels. Now, these people who own these franchises are not uneducated. They are not reckless. They are not uh, negligent. They would have done all sorts of studies, analysis, projections before they decide to locate in Guyana. And obviously, whatever analysis they did, it was obviously great 
because they are now going to Guyana to open these brand new hotels. We have an unemployment, well, a lack of skill in Guyana. We need people. Let me just explain to you briefly. We got into government in, 20, in August last year. We didn't have a budget since 2019. We had to rush and pass an emergency budget. That's August, 20, September 29, 2020, we passed that budget. We passed another budget for the year 2021. The 2020 budget contracts for infrastructural works, all the streets, the dams, the canals, and so many other projects, they are still being executed. And then we, had a, we have a 2021 budget that we still have to spend, and we are lagging behind. You know why? Because we don't have enough contractors we don't have enough people to do the work. I am talking about billions and billions of Guyana dollar, millions and millions of US. We have relaxed the procurement rules and laws to allow, because you know by law we have to bid for these contracts. You have to publicly advertise and, and, and people bid in a very transparent process. Government doesn't award contracts as you may be reading in the, 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 the propaganda press. We have a very transparent process. But what we have done in recognition of the fact that we need new contractors and we need to develop a breed of new contractors, we have relaxed the rules. And young, young men, young guys are now getting contracts. You are Guyana and we welcome you, all of you, back home. You can play a role. I spoke to a lot of people last night at the wedding reception that I attended. And so many of them I encouraged to come back to Guyana incorporate a company and start to bid for the contracts. We are working very hard to build what is called a local content policy. When the oil begins to flow, well it's flowing now, but we want to re we want to refine and when the COVID pandemic disappears, and hopefully that happens early, then we will have massive influx of people and investment. But we want to ensure that our people benefit first in terms of job creation and in terms of everything that flows from those investments opportunities. And that's why we have started, in addition to the, the school program, in addition to the University of Guyana, we have started an online scholarship program in which we intend to graduate over the next four years, 20,000 guys. We carefully selected universities that are credible and whose academic integrity would be recognized right across the world. So when our people are certified, that certification will be acceptable and respected across borders. We have chosen uh, universities in India, in Europe, and in the Caribbean. And importantly, our people can stay home. Their lives are unaffected. They can continue to work if they wish while they continue to study on these programs. And most importantly, we went into the villages, every single village. You know, Guyana, there are a lot of people who want to divide us in Guyana. Divide us along racial lines and ethnic lines. 
But every one of us, every minister, we didn't leave it up to Priya Manichan. We didn't leave it up to Sonia Parian. We had two ministers, one for public service and one for uh, education. The president led from the front and all of us descended into the villages right across the length and breadth of our country to promote that program. We went into every single community, black, Amerindian, Indian, whatever they call it in composition. And we talked to the people, we shared out flyers to ensure that every single household is being aware of this program. And we explained to them the purpose of the program. You see, the truth is that you can be a plumber and have 20 and 30 years experience, as there are so many of them in Guyana, and you can be the best plumber. But if you don't got the certificate, the Marriott and the Hilton will not hire you as a plumber. And that is the truth. You can sew the best frack and sew the best sari in shalwar. But if you don't got the cartage to say, oh, seamstress, you may not be able to get the work. And people from overseas will come into your own country and take away that job. You know, there was a time, and you all know this because you all came here because of a system of government that suppressed you, took away your freedom drove fear into you. That is why you are here. Or that's why most of you are here. That system is no longer there. And once we are in the government, that system will never, ever return. And what you saw happening at the last elections as I said at a forum that I spoke in Queens uh, two nights ago, it may have started or it may have been born and owes its genesis out of a political contestation between political parties for government. That is how it originated. But what you saw manifested and the struggle the battle that you saw here for five months was not a battle for the PPP to get into government. That was not it. That was a battle to save the nation state of Guyana. Because our country was on the precipice and on the brink of possible complete and utter destruction. And you and all Guyanese and a hundred governments across the globe, and every single international organization in the Western Hemisphere stood on our side, on the side of our country. And we were able to win in the end. For five years, there was mismanagement. There was rampant discrimination, corruption, thievery. Non accomplishment. Yet, when we went to that, those polls, we won by only one seat. Only one seat. Only 15,000 votes. We got more than the other side. I say that to you so that you appreciate how quickly we can slide it backwards. And that is why all of us have to be vigilant. And that is why we are, while we are pursuing big and mammoth transformational projects, highways to Brazil, bridge to Suriname, all the hotels that I speak about, new roadways, massive new roadways, gas to shore project to change the electrical problem in the country. You know what is a major problem in Guyana? Energy. Do you know? that we in Guyana, we pay five times more for electricity than you. When you go leave here, call your family in Guyana. When you go read a meter, I will tell you how much kilowatt they bought. 
I don't tell you what the bill at the end of the month. You will see. When you pay 100 USA, you will pay 500 US for the same power in Guyana. So unless we change that, only then we can unleash our potential and our real potential is happening. Not necessarily in oil. Our potential is in agriculture. Once we are able to change that formula about electricity, for example, the black bush folder that you're taking hampers to that place will produ can produce its own ketchup and pepper sauce at a factory industrial level and canned vegetables. The only ketchup that you eat here, they have no tomato in the tomato either, chill. You can see it concentrate. We can put actual tomato in that bottle. And when you unleash that on the world market, there is nobody who can copy that. We store bhaji and dalma and karela. We can get that to you here fresh, but we need a processing capability. The processing capability requires cheap electricity. And that is why we are working so assiduously and from so many different perspectives to change that, that thing. So we have wind energy that we are concentrating on. If they did not kill the Amaya Falls hydro project, today we would have been using electricity and getting electricity from that project at, at, at the fraction of what we are doing now. But we have a destructive opposition. We have, why would you want to vote against, vote against a project that can transform Guyana and can transform the lives of every single Guyanese, including your own supporters? But these people are bent only on power. We, in our government, governmental power doesn't mean anything to us. It's a means, it's not the end. The end is to develop our country so that every Guyanese, irrespective of race, class, or creed, have an equal place and can aspire and can dream and can realize those dreams. That is our objective. But you have a different set of people who just want power. And when they get power, what do they do with it? I don't mind that we are out of the government. I was out of the government. I, 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 <laughs> I'm a lawyer, you know, and when I'm out of government, you know, I, I, I make a lot of money. When I work in government, I work for a salary. But it's not about, it's about what do you do with the opportunity. To govern. The opportunity to govern is a privilege. It's a blessing. It, it, it's, it's like what Pandit is doing, an opportunity to lead a congregation, to do dharma, to do serve your people, ensure that they're okay. All of our people, in every single community, that is what we are committed to. And that is what we do every, or we try to do every single day. I don't say that we are succeeding, or we, we shall succeed, but we will continue to persevere and try. And that's what we are doing every single day. We do not believe in governing in the traditional offices in Georgetown. That was the other style of government that the other people practice. Every single day, if you go on the internet, if you go on Facebook, if you read the newspapers, you will see that ministers of our government, every single day, we are right across the country. In the backlands, in the factories, in the dams, on the vill in the villages and in the urban centers. We have a flood. A great disaster. Now, it's, we 
can't blame anyone for that. Came from the Amazon, came from excessive rains. So Rinam was in a native water. Large sections of Brazil was in a native water. And Guyana obviously being in the middle. And we are flat. We obviously were affected. We went into every single community and the president led from the front. And we went into every single community and we stood with them, we consoled them, we gave them our solidarity, we gave them our support, and we are delivering flood, flood relief to them. Now, that may not compensate them for the massive losses that they suffered. I just came out of my own 